Welcome to the Policy Hawk, video and audio edition. Hi. Now I'm sure you're all familiar with what the Policy Hawk is, of course. But for those of you recently suffering from traumatic brain injury, the Policy Hawk is Cold Spring Harbor High School's only political newsletter, produced entirely by students and overseen by Mr. Itali. It's produced by the Politics Club, which meets Wednesdays in J29. And now we're hitting YouTube, like the cultural phenomenon we are. Indeed. This is our first broadcast showcasing the top news stories of 2011. The Policy Hawk Year in Review. This is James Toomey. And this is Billy Smith. Now before we go into the top five stories of the year, we'll touch on some of the key deaths of 2011. In early October, American entrepreneur, inventor, and turtleneck model Steve Jobs passed away after a long battle with pancreatic cancer. It was a tough day. More evidence that this was a tough year for the oddly dressed, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi died later that month of an excess of evil totalitarianism and a bullet to the head. Gaddafi had been absolute dictator of Libya for over 40 years, repressing his people, blowing up planes, and astounding the word world regularly with his garb. His he was eventually killed in the recent Libyan Revolution, which we'll talk about more later. Just last month, another brutal despot, Kim Jong-il of North Korea, died of cancer. An almost universal symbol of repression and decadence over the poverty of his people, Mr. Kim leaves his son in charge, one Kim Jong-un, about whom very little is known. British-American writer, notable atheist, brilliant debater, and all-around meaty face, Christopher Hitchens died, again of cancer, the day before Kim Jong-il stole his idea and bit the dust. Finally, 9-11 mastermind and terrorist overlord Osama bin Laden was killed by the U.S. military in a move of questionable legality but unquestionable awesomeness. On the run for the previous decade, he'd become a symbol of the 9-11 tragedy, as well as of the difficulty of the war against terror. His death was met with a massive wave of patriotism. Now, it's usually difficult at, a close, at the close of a year to reflect on that year's important births, but this year saw the planet's 7 billionth human being born, a Filipino girl, Danica Mae Camacho. Of course, this is a total estimation, as no one knows for sure how many people there are. So the UN, realizing we passed 7 billion at some point, essentially just picked a baby and stuck with it. And now, the top five news stories of 2011. Cue dramatic music. We don't have that kind of budget. Right. Number five on the list, then, the Occupy Wall Street movement. On September 17th, the first protesters assembled themselves in Zuccotti Park, Manhattan. Chanting the phrase that has become synonymous with the movement, we are the 99%, the protesters took a stand against the growing economic inequality in the United States and the general apathy of the political and financial classes. The Occupy protests have since spread out from New York across the U.S. and across the world. Despite a lack of a cohesive agenda, the protests have managed to change the general political conversation, prompting reflection on the justifications for such growing inequality. In this way, they can be seen as the left's reaction to the Tea Party movement. Of course, they've also generated much controversy. Arguing in their favor, we have our very own Akeem Hop. Occupy Wall Street is a movement made by those who are technically unemployed to express their concern for, for the well-being of our economy of the United States. So what they're saying is that economic reforms made in the present years haven't really had much of an impact on the current um, debt as well as the unemployment rate. So many conservatives or Republicans state that they are unemployed and they just need to go find jobs. But this is illogical to say because unemployment is currently increasing. So it's kind of difficult for one to get a job. So it's kind of illogical for them to state that they need to go find jobs. Thank you, Professor Hawk. Now number four on the list, the cataclysmic Japanese earthquake. On the 11th of March, 2011, Japan was hit with a tsunami of magnitude 9 earthquake off its shore. The most powerful earthquake ever to hit Japan, the wave devastated the shoreline, causing tremendous damage. The Japanese National Police Agency has confirmed 15,844 deaths, 5,890 injured, and 3,451 people missing. The World Bank estimates the total cost of this disaster will be 235 billion U.S. dollars, making it the most expensive natural disaster in history. In addition, the wave destroyed and damaged several nuclear facilities, namely the meltdown, of three reactors at the Fukushima nuclear power plant. This has led to substantial release of radiation and an evacuation of the area. As late as July, radioactive beef was, being, was found being sold in Tokyo markets. Since nobody really has any opinions on this, it was just bad and there are no jokes we can make about it, we're moving on. Number three on the list then, the terrorist, the death of terrorist mastermind Osama bin Laden. Since the 2001 attacks on the World Trade Center, one name was on the lips of every American as the enemy of the United States, Osama bin Laden. Owning up to the attack shortly after they occurred, he's been on the run from the U.S. military for the past 10 years. But finally, on May 2, 2011, an elite team of U.S. Navy SEALs, in a mission codenamed Operation Neptune Spear, landed at his pa compound in Pakistan, shot him in the face, buried the body in the ocean, and left. The general U.S. reaction, naturally, was ecstatic. Flags were waved and tears of joy were shed. The international reaction, however, has been somewhat mixed. 
The assassination of a civilian in a non-hostile country is, of course, illegal under international law, and many people argue that as evil as he may have been, he at least deserved a trial. Most people, however, were just happy to see him gone. Al-Qaeda vowed revenge for the incident, a threat no one took seriously because, hey, we got Osama. Number two on the list, then, the ongoing Eurozone crisis. In a crisis ongoing since 2009 and only intensifying this year, the European Union nations that use the euro have been facing increasing debt and inability to revive their linked economies. This year saw the fall of long-standing leaders such as Greece's George Papandreou and Italy's sex scandal machine Silvio Berlusconi. In addition, some analysts argue that the crisis will lead to the breakup of the euro. Since I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about and got most of this off Wikipedia, we go now to our senior analyst for affairs related to Europe and historical anomalies no one cares about, Avery Krebs. Alright, uh, where do you see Europe economically in the next year? In the next year, Europe probably will be weakened greatly by the economic crisis <clears throat> in the Eurozone, though for the most part they won't be any worse than the US was last year. Do you think the Euro will make it? It definitely will, but how strong it is after the crisis will definitely depend on Europe's relationship with Britain and how Germany and France modify the Lisbon Treaty. What kind of underlying changes to the EU mechanism, the uh, treaties, the Euro, can we expect to see in the future? We can definitely see Germany and France taking a leading role in this initiative, and Britain, if it continues on its current course, will definitely be more isolated from Europe than it has been in history. Thank you, Mr. Kress. Now, before we reveal our top news story of 2011, let's hear from you. Reporters, go. Are we ready? <laughs> so what do you think the top news story of 2011 would be? Well, obviously, there's a lot of top news this year. Every day there's news, of course. But I think my top choice for this year is the killing of Osama bin Laden. Because he's been the terrorist that's been attacking our country, and we always, whenever we say something bad happened in our country, we blame him. Who are we going to blame now? He's gone. I don't know. Thank I you like the that. idea, but I love that. that he's gone, but still. That's all I gotta say. So what do you think is the top news story of 2011? I believe that the top news story of 2011 is that Derek Jeter got his 3,000 hit during the season of 2011. Go Yankees. Oh. What do you believe the top news story of 2011 is? I'm going to say Occupy Wall Street. That was, uh, it was pretty big. There's a lot of people. And the traffic going into the city, that was my... I know, I know. It was rough. And then, yeah, I'm going to say Occupy Wall Street. Yeah. So what do you think is the top news story of 2011? Uh, Osama bin Laden's death. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Alright, so what do you think is the top news story of 2011? I think it's when the Colts won their first game this season. Oh my gosh! Oh, boy, blue. Oh. So what do you think is the top news story of 2011? I think the top news story of 2011 is Steve Jobs' casting one. Thank you. So what do you think the top news story of 2011 was? Um, 2011. Yeah, I, I, I know that. That's stupid. Uh, it had to be Casey Anthony. It had to be uh, Casey Anthony, alright. So what do you think is the top news story of 2011? Um, probably the Arab Spring, especially with Libya. Thank you. What do you think the top news story of 2011 is? Yeah, Kaylee, what do you think? Egypt, all right. Egypt, Egypt. Yes. okay. Go with that. Thank you. Our top news story of 2011 is the Arab Spring. On the 17th of December 2010, Mohammed Bouazizi, a Tunisian street vendor, set himself on fire and ignited two of the passions and hopes of the Arab world in protest of the confiscation of his merchandise. Thus began the Arab Spring, the series of protests and revolutions across the Middle East, transforming it slowly, incompletely, but transforming it from the autocratic bloc it has been our entire lives. Through the use of social media and the internet, the Tunisian people came out onto the streets to protest the autocracy and the inequality and the repression under which they had been forced to live. By the 14th of January, 2011, Tunisian's dictatorial president, Ben Ali, of 23 years, fled to Saudi Arabia. And that was just the beginning. The protests and revolts spread out across the region. To date, the former government has been overthrown in Tunisia, Egypt, where President Hosni Mubarak finally resigned peacefully after almost a month of protests in the now famous Tahrir Square, and Libya, where Colonel Muammar Gaddafi's brutal military response to the protests resulted in a drawn-out and bloody civil war, a civil war he eventually lost, with the UN-mandated NATO no-fly zone providing assistance to the rebellion. In Syria and Yemen, major governmental changes have occurred after sustained protests, though Syria remains in revolt, seemingly on the brink of civil war. In Oman, Jordan, Lebanon, and Morocco, governmental changes have occurred after protests, 
Algeria, Iraq, Western Sahara, Mauritania, Sudan, and Saudi Arabia have all seen protests with limited successes. With a dream, my cardigan. Welcome to the land of fame, access. Am I gonna fit in? Jumped in the camp, here I am for the first time. Look to my right, and I see the Hollywood.